Hi, this is Paisley Trees. This is Dr. Crow. And welcome to uh, an episode two of us playing Civ Six as the Ottomans. Yeah, we had a little bit of a near death experience last time. Near death or death? Death, yeah. <laughs> but we're some, you know, divine intervention, a little bit of help. We uh Yeah, I'm the divine intervention. Yeah, we uh recovered and now we are back to fighting the Hungarians. Yeah. And playing Civ. Yeah, so they've got us you know, I see a lot of units here. Um, but I think we can kill a few, so let's do that now. Very nice. Actually... The... Didn't kill him. No, didn't okay. kill anything. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let's uh, maybe protect our settler a little bit here. Right, let's move around. Yeah, I think so. Right. Okay. And let's check out what the city is. Yeah, sounds good. Um, and then I think we were planning on settling right here. Yeah. Yeah, right yeah, there. Okay. And uh, we're working on archery, so hopefully we get the boost soon. I don't think we're going to get the craftsmanship boost. I mean, we do have the builders. We could could do it, I guess. Uh, okay, let's think about it. I mean, we're going to have to get both anyway, so let's move that way. Oh, no, they keep coming for me. Like, can you <laughs> not? Yeah. <laughs> ah, nice. There we go. We got it. And maybe we can take out that other warrior, too. Let's see. Can, well, we got a new warrior because we were building one. Okay. So let's move the new one out of the city. Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Yeah. And let's kill here or should we stay in place? Just in case. Look, I don't want to lose my warrior again. Okay. Let's just stay in place. And you're still healing. Great. And we'll get the camp as soon as we can. And let's see what the city is. Okay. Baghdad. Baghdad. Very nice. Okay, so Baghdad also will become part of the Ottoman Empire. Great. Um, we have Cairo, Baghdad here. All of these cities do become part of the Ottoman Empire. Um, Cairo, I believe, is conquered by Selim I uh, around 1516, 17. And yeah, it will be a very important city for the Ottomans. Right. I mean, we're going to speak more about the Arabian cities when we play them, but there's going to be a lot of overlap with the Ottomans. Um, you know, the, the provinces like the Levant area, as well as Egypt area become very key mm -hmm. cities for the Ottoman empire, not only because of their, um, economic benefits, you know, there's a lot of trade happening through that area, but also their symbolic significance. Mm -hmm. And culturally too. I mean, a lot of things that we associate with the Ottomans, like coffee drinking, um, in Ottoman culture, they have the shadow theater. That all comes from Egypt, actually. So, let's, go. Okay. let's see what's happening here. Okay. <laughs> I'm really nervous. I don't know why. Okay, do you think I should kill the slinger here or stay mm. in my place? Well, I don't think that warrior can do much damage to you. So, let's just kill the slinger. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And what do you think? Should we go down to the Tundra or check out other cities? Maybe check out some other cities. Okay. Let's see what we find here. Medina. Oh, okay. speaking of symbolically important cities. Very important. Um, do you want to explain why it's important? Right. So Medina is um, in the Arabian Peninsula. It's where the tomb of the prophet is and the home of the prophet. So often when people go on pilgrimage to Mecca called Hajj, uh, during a specific period. They also go to Medina. So these two cities are often considered like twin cities and there's a lot of beautiful manuscripts showing Medina and Mecca together. Um, hope maybe we can pop one of those on the screen. Yeah. And you know, the guardianship of Mecca and Medina was a key aspect of Ottoman political legitimacy and their cultural influence. Great. So it basically, you know, having control over Mecca and Medina meant that you can uh, have a lot of influence and sway over Muslim subjects, even outside of your own empire in the Safavid or Persian empires, um, or, you know, in, in India. India. Yeah. So it's quite a, an important um, conquest for them. Yeah, so we'll have to capture it in the game too. Right. Well, if Hungary <laughs> yeah. leaves me Hungary alone. Hungary can get out of here. <laughs> I mean, the Ottomans did often fight wars on multiple France. Yeah, almost always. Um, okay, we're gonna found a city. Let's see what we get. 
We Did got Edirne. Edirne, very cool. Very nice. Edirne is the second capital of the Ottomans. Um, right. So it goes Bursa, Edirne, Istanbul. Istanbul. And then during the 17th century, actually, the Ottoman court moves back to Edirne. Um, you know, just trying to get away from the big city, kind of. Um, but they're forced to come back to Istanbul by a popular revolt. Right. Um, so what is an Indirne? Can you describe it? You've been there, right? Yeah, I've been there. It's a very, it's not a very big city, actually, but it has these very interesting monuments from the time when it was the capital. Um, a very, very important, very beautiful mosque, the Salimia, is there. Right. And also a lot of hospital complexes, which are very interesting. Right. The Salimia is built after Suleiman. It's Salim II. Mm -hmm. So I think we mentioned Salim the First. first. Who conquers, you know, the Egypt, Arabia, all these places. That's like 1516. Yeah. Uh, and then Salim the Second is around 1570s. 80s. 80s. Yeah. Well, later, later, for sure. Right. Um, and here, do we want to change anything? I think we're producing a unit, so that should be good. And mm -hmm. I don't I think we'll keep in the faith for now. Okay. Great. Yeah, let's keep this warrior alive. We do have an archer now. Yeah, so I upgraded the slinger to an archer. And we do have this other warrior to the left. Maybe he can help out a bit. Yeah, let me bait actually this other warrior here. Hopefully they go after him instead. And let's get this stone online. We're one turn away from finding iron. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> let's see. Oh, I hate it when there's no iron. Um, Let's go south or... Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go, go south. south. Oh. Okay, this is a coast, Sea of Galilee. Great. Um, and here we just finished craftsmanship. I switched over to craftsmanship because I wanted that card for uh, production towards the archer. And now I think the next one we're going to get is Early Empire. Very nice. We're seven turns away from five and then six. Okay. Just have to keep an eye on it. Let's keep that warrior alive. Did it die? Okay. No, it's still going. <laughs> Well, we did draw away the other one, which is nice. Okay, so who should I kill first? Oh, I can only kill this one. Should I do it? I guess so. And then, do I? I think mm, maybe you... switch them out. Like totally. I think let's do something like that and move in or stay. Hmm. It's tough. I think I'm gonna move in. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Scaredy cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, there's iron there. Oh, wait, iron. Uh, no. Okay, no. It's, I, it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. It's all right. Um, let's see. Maybe what do we got here? We can settle an iron. Okay, there's one there. Right. Maybe Hungary gets out of the way. We can <laughs> settle there. Okay, so that's one of the goals we have. We got to okay. get a settler out there. Okay. That's literally it? Where's the other one? No, over there. Okay, not useful. So we have one copy. <laughs> Let's try to get that. Um, next, we want. A, I'm about to make a query, right? Quarry. Quarry. Right here. <laughs> Great. Next turn. Okay, so there's the other archer. I'm just gonna kill with my archers. They yeah. do a lot of good damage. Oh, really, Jerusalem? Really? Okay, go back this way. <laughs> I want suzerainty of somewhere, but I'm not sure how to get it. Um, I think they wanted a trade route, so that's something. We can do that, out. yeah. Yeah. You stay in place, you stay in place. And then I guess this builder needs to do something. I got three builds. Maybe chop the stone out and get that campus online there. Okay. Great. Nice. A lot of coast. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can use our Barbary Corsairs later on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, right. That's a, once we move through Arabia. Um, I actually want to get an encampment and what's a good spot for it. So I think we're going to go war this way next. I don't think it's worth it to go for Hungary. They're so far. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is a good spot. So let me just buy it from, oh, maybe money. Oh, I have my tea back. No tea. I have my tea too. Uh, I have my tea too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to sell it to Arabia. 
Um, because if they declare war, or if I declare war, I get it back. Um, and that means now I can buy that tile mm -hmm. right here. And then from here, Oops. I need to swap and then um, place, lock it in. Do we build the encampment now? I guess so. It might give us some boosts, maybe. Yeah, that's true. It'll give us the boost to stay workforce. Stay workforce, OK. <laughs> Great. And then, OK, so let's move you this way. And the reason why I bought this tile from Adirna is that it's cheaper because it's in the second ring, uh, whereas it's in the third ring of Istanbul. Just a little tip. Great. So let's keep fighting. Yeah. Um, let's keep moving. I think I'm just going to stay in place, like keep that defensive uh, bonus and maybe keep moving in with you. What should I do with this builder? Hmm. Maybe chop in the capital? Yeah, that could work. Yeah, because we don't. And then, oh. Oh, careful. <laughs> Wait, what did I just do? We just moved the archer in place of the warrior. I guess that's fine. I meant to move this guy here, but oh well. Okay. And then let's keep moving down. I mean, I'm surprised. Oh, yes. Isn't this Pangea? Like, where is everyone? I don't know. I mean, I guess the Byzantines are way over there. Is this like the left side of the map? Huh. Maybe. I think what I'm going to do then is go through the tundra, even though it's dangerous, and try to uh, scout this way. Okay. Uh, ancient era ends in eight, eight turns. turns. I'm not going to get a golden age. I don't need it. I don't have a lot of faith to get monumentality. And I don't think the other ones matter. So it'll be fine okay okay i think we're safe for now let's move you one more in and go get to chopping here nice so some interesting things about the ottoman dynasty um you know people might be or might not be more familiar with the kind of european uh dynasties you know we sometimes think about who our audience is you know and um so that's not necessarily the case but Right. But yeah, I mean, like, I don't like it when textbooks assume that their audience is going to know, you know, uh, like an England or France, yeah. because you don't know, especially, you know, in university where people have been educated. So, you know, in that sense, I don't think, you know, it's good to assume what people know. Mm -hmm. But I think if you play a lot of games, yeah. you know, the fantasy genre pretty well. Um, which I think is based on a lot of European conceptions of empires. Yeah. And, you know, the Ottomans have a lot of very unique features about the way in which their government works. A lot of these features come from, you know, the steppe traditions, the Mongol traditions. One of those is that all sons of the monarch have an equal claim to the throne. Right. Um, so it's very different from the European context, for sure. Um, and that meant that there's a lot of different governmental techniques that were designed to kind of figure out who should be the the one who succeeds the, the, the previous emperor. Mm, I'm having a little trouble here figuring out yeah. what to do. <laughs> we don't want to lose that archer, so maybe we can switch him. Okay. I'm just trying to defend and they don't they won't leave me alone. Okay, so I think I want to chop here. Um, okay. cause I think that's a good spot for a commercial hub. Yeah, get that in camera top. Right. Uh, so let me just pin that actually. I think if I do shift A, it can get the pins up, get my commercial hub here. Um, let me just quickly pin a little bit. It's not working. Um, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Get the campus there. Yeah. And then I'm thinking here would be the government plaza. Uh, just because so, it's closer to the two. And then here are the next commercial hub. Okay, just some quick pinning. Yeah. And then in three turns, we can chop that stone out. Um, I Maybe... Maybe turn it. around, yeah. <laughs> it's looking a little bit dangerous down here. A lot of... Uh... Bandits. 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 Not Bandits. Yeah. Should I just risk it? No, I don't think so. Okay. What could be down there? It's so useful. 
Okay, we'll go around and see what the city is here. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And looks like we got a pantheon. Ooh, very nice. So I guess if we're being historically accurate, um, we'd probably choose God of the Open Sky. You think so? Well, yeah. I mean, um, you know, the, the pre-Islamic Turks um, who lived in Central Asia, who migrated towards Anatolia, worshipped um, this kind of open sky god. Right. Um, and although by the year... You know, 900, 1,000, the Turks are really becoming very Islamicized. There are still elements of that that were uh, continued in folk religion and in language. Right. So, I mean, God of the Open Sky maybe uh, historically makes sense, but not for the game. Maybe not here, yeah. I'm going to go for Goddess of the Festivals and choose the Plantations tech. And, you know, something interesting I learned recently at, about the Ilkhanid Empire, which is another offshoot of the Mongolian Empire, but they convert to Islam. But their mosques are still sort of oriented towards the sun and not Mecca, like all other mosques are. So when Muslims pray, they pray towards Mecca. So the mosque wall where people face should be facing Mecca. But in the Ilkhanid Empire, they still had this idea and connection to um, this idea of the, the sun, where the sun rises also being a uh, religious importance. So that's something that they maintain. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what we got. I don't know where this guy's going. Yeah. I'm just gonna, hopefully that guy helps, but okay. Why don't you, I think with my archers, I'm gonna fight back here. Oops. Okay, cool. So let's move here, even though this is kind of dangerous. Oh, that was oh, it. Okay, <laughs> not too dangerous. <laughs> it feels dangerous, and you stay here, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so actually a lot of the kind of Mongol influences that come into uh, not only the Ottomans, but also Safavids, the Mughals, um, include governmental symbolism, um, and in terms of law also. Uh, so... People tend to think of the Ottomans as being an Islamic empire, so they must have the Sharia as the law, but Sharia itself is very complicated. Right. And the Ottoman law also included um, Kanun, which is imperial law, Yasa, which is Mongol law, and Urf, which is customary law. And all of those are intertwined in Ottoman legal system and Ottoman governance. Right. And Suleiman in English is called Suleiman the Magnific Magnificent. Mm -hmm. But what is his Turkish name? Turkish name is Kanuni, which means the lawgiver. Um, because one of the things that was really characteristic about Suleiman's reign was trying to meld these systems of law into a kind of cohesive um, structure, cohesive form. Um, not always successful in that. There's a lot of kind of, uh, <laughs> you could call them, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a... It's a lot of a negotiation Negotiations, happening. yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we got early empire. Yeah, and I'm going to build my next settler and try to get that iron sooner. So I'm going to put that production card in. And then here, I think we can just keep that just in case. The uh, production towards units. And we just got masonry, so which means I can chop here. I want to chop the settler, right? I mean, it's annoying that I'm going to be... In one turn, yeah. Um... But let's do it anyways. Let's see if I can make this city grow a little slower. Is there any way? I mean, I'm already production focused, so no. Um, it's fine. It's just one population. We seem to be growing pretty quickly. And then here, what should we work towards? Hmm. We have the boost for writing already. Yeah, so let's go towards writing. And maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, Ottoman writing system. Sure. That's kind of related yeah. <laughs> to your dissertation as well. Yeah. So uh, people might know, people might not know that Ottoman Turkish is actually pretty distinct from modern Turkish and also from the kind of common Turkish that was spoken by people in uh, Anatolia. Um, Ottoman Turkish is kind of what we call an interculture. So it has huge amounts of Arabic, Persian vocabulary from all kinds of different languages and is written in a very ornate and very formal style right um so if you're 
fluent in modern Turkish or, you know, it's still pretty tough to actually read an Ottoman document. Right. Sorry, I'm just going to appoint um, Owls of Minerva here because we're not getting we're the not vampires. Getting it, no. <laughs> yeah, so let's just get that over with and accept it um, and get one more policy card. So that's nice. What should we put here? Mm -hmm. I think just production. Sounds that's good. Important. Yeah. Great. And so can you tell us a little bit about the script? Yeah, Ottoman script is based off of the Persian adaptation of the Arabic script. Right. How, is the, how are these three different? <laughs> um, Persian script has a few more letters. Um, and Ottoman script adds a few more letters, kind of. Uh, a lot of people criticize Ottoman script because uh, it doesn't really show vowels very well. And Turkish is very vowel heavy language. Um, but, you know, if, if you're used to it, it's not that difficult. The main issue for us is that we read a lot of handwriting and people's handwriting can be very tough to read sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. So what kind of sources and documents have the Ottomans left us? I mean, to be fair, the Ottomans go up until like 19, 1920s. 1920s, yeah. So. so they do change a lot. But in yeah. their sort of early modern conception, you know, what kind of documents were they producing? Well, the kind of thing which is interesting about the Ottomans uh, like particularly is that I don't like to use the term modern very much, but even in their like very early uh, imperial era, they had a kind of modern approach to bureaucracy in the right. sense that they produced tons and tons and tons of paperwork. Um, like they had so many forms, so many standard like documents, so many like statistical things. And so they have millions and millions of documents um, all written in this very, you know, somewhat formalistic script. And so it's a great resource for historians, but it can be kind of frustrating sometimes too, because you'll want to find something and go, oh, like this document is. <laughs> you have to get through a lot of, a lot of panegyrics, yeah. which means, you know, just praising the Sultan, listing all of his titles, which I think actually um, they do in this game. It's maybe it's not here, but. Whenever you get introduced to Suleiman, they say, you are the king of kings, Shah and Shah, uh, the magnificent, the caliph, all of these titles. Yeah, and it's pretty much like that in all the documents too, except there's maybe like four or five more. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, it can be kind of tiresome, but really interesting historical sources. Exactly. Okay, we got that settler. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to like clear, clear the away. <laughs> I think I can do it. There's yeah, a lot of... there's not too many here. Oh wait, I think I can move one more in. I'll do it. I don't care. Yeah, he's only got very small health anyway. Yeah, it's fine. And then <laughs> with this builder, I mean, I can keep chopping, um, but I feel like you know when I chop, I should build a mine, and I have two. Um, Charges left. Yeah, so let's go build. Let's chop this forest and build one more mine, and then maybe we'll get irrigation soon, uh, which would be helpful. I think I'm just gonna walk through the flood. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh my gosh, should I take that settler and start my war early? But can you do it right now? Let's see what happens next turn. I really want a trader actually, so let's see if I can purchase one. Um, you just need one more gold. Is there really one more? I think so. Oh no, it's a few. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Would you like to give me money? Oh, nice. Let's get this money and get my trader. Nice. Um. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be safe. I think so. But especially with owls, we want to start trading with city states. Mm -hmm. And here, let's get the. Do we need another settler while I have the card in? I think so. Why not? Let's actually get it out of its unit. It'll grow faster. Let's get our barracks and then we can start, you know. Can also do walls too. May help if the... Nah, nah. we're safe. <laughs> Me lose a capital city, okay. <laughs> we'll be fine. Oh my God, an archer. They just won't leave me alone. No man ever wetted clay. Okay, so here's pottery um, and Let's keep moving with you. Let's kill here. It's, uh, we want to settle here, I think, because it's close enough to the iron, but it has good enough uh, mm -hmm. starting tiles. And we really need to start... Oh, this guy has a promotion. So why don't I move up, hit, and then promote? Um, 
promotion. What about you? Oh, you also have a promotion. Let's get the one for units because they won't leave. They won't <laughs> stop, you know? You know who can bring peace to the Hungarian and Ottoman empires? Who's that? Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, because he's Hungarian? <laughs> <laughs> yes, his parents, his father's side is Hungarian, his mother's side is Ottoman. So Yeah, from Syria. From Syria. Yeah. So. They're um, Hungarian. I believe his father's side is also Jewish. Yeah, I think and Jewish. his mother's yeah. side is Syrian Jewish. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Uh, you know, the Ottoman Empire has really large uh, Jewish, um, what's the word, like cities, districts. Yeah, the largest Jewish city in the world for many centuries was Salonika. Salonika. Yeah. Thessaloniki today? Yeah, no today one? is in Greece. Um, right. And yeah, many of the um, Jews who were exiled from Spain um, moved to the Ottoman Empire because there was a degree of toleration there, which wasn't really present in Europe at that time. Right. And there's actually something written, I think it's from the Sultan who's saying, what a, what is it? Like what a mistake the Spanish are making. Yeah. It says something like, you know, uh, I thought the king of Spain was a genius, but he turns out to be a fool because he sends this treasure right to me or something like that. Which is the Jewish and also Muslim populations um, during the Inquisition. The Inquisition, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> It's, it's hard, like, speaking about history just off of the top of your head. You don't want to make any yeah, mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and then here I wanted to get the settler. Next turn. And I think I'm okay here. Oh, I want another promotion. Which one should I get? I think I need the land I units. think so, yeah. They, won't, they just won't go away. And then, oh, we're not fighting with Jerusalem anymore. That's good. That's good. And then, oh, you have a promotion. Let's get this one and then what about you and then you just yeah should i just stay in place i think it's fine and i don't think they can come after me yet so let's cross the river here just do it put it on the settler no because then the they can hit my warrior but they can't hit my settler okay so hopefully that was the right choice and then you have what promotion um land units you know what? I don't... I'm going to keep staying here. I feel like they're really annoying me. Uh, let's chop here. And... Ooh. Hmm. Should we hit? You <laughs> could try it. It's major defeat. I don't know why, but whatever. The scout's not doing much for me anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well join the war. It looks like my settler baited the archer, which is interesting. But I'm going this way. And you come... Well, you know what? Let's get you the defense against range and then here we can just should i keep moving in or just back up um we could try it i'm gonna back up because i want to go after arabia pretty soon now that'll be sort of the next big thing we do um and then let's get our mine here so we have at least a little bit more production and then one more turn until we unlock our campus Oh, you ran away, I see. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Will you make peace, actually? Is that... No, I feel like it's bugged. Because it says up here... <laughs> yeah. Wants, wants to, to make, make peace. peace but... Does he, though? Does he? And... He just sent another oh, archer peace. after us. Uh, yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't want peace. <laughs> it looks like we got state workforce. Let's see, do we want to change anything here? I think we're fine. Okay. Um, we're still making settlers. Just a few more. Just one more right now. And then let's keep hitting here. I feel like my archers will do fine for me. Um, and sure, we found the city. Yeah, I think so. Let's do it. Yeah, let's see where we get. We got Ankara. Ankara. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, Ankara is actually the capital of the modern Turkish Republic. Um, it is an old city, but it really is mostly developed in the 20th century. Um, before that, it's mostly known for being the site of a battle where Timur, Tamerlane... Who we spoke about last time. Yeah, defeated Bayezid, uh, who was the... Footstool. The footstool. <laughs> so, although we don't actually know that for sure, but... It, it's just like a... It's a common... Trope. Trope, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's now the second largest city in Turkey. Yeah. 
Uh, when does it become the capital? Did you say uh, that? Yeah, early 1920s. Um, right. It, you know, I, for a period of time, both Istanbul and Ankara are kind of the capital, but it's a little bit complicated. Yes. Um, I think actually, let's stop here. I need to collect my <laughs> thoughts and figure out what I'm going to do with my army. Do I push against Hungary or do I redirect towards, yeah. Arabia? And then also do a little bit of district planning and... Hopefully the next time we see you, I'll have a few more pins up for the game. All right. Great. See you next time. Bye.